All right, let's talk pathways problem 3.69. It's a stoichiometry problem. The problem, if you look in your book, reads chlorine gas can be made in the lab by the reaction of hydrochloric acid and manganese 4 oxide. It gives you a reaction. It's balanced, and then it tells you when 1.82 moles of HCl react with excess MnO2, how many moles of chlorine gas, and how many grams of chlorine gas form. So this basically is just a stoichiometry problem, okay? Mm -hmm. All chemical reactions combine reactants. Here there's two reactants to make three products. The amount of the reactants that you use or you have available for use determines how much product can be made. Remember, four of these combine with one of these to make these products as written, okay? So the quantities of the materials that you start with is really important. Now this problem assumes 100% yield. It presumes it goes to the right as far as possible. And we're told that we have 1.82 moles of this, and we have excess of the manganese dioxide. And that's crucial information. Whenever you see the excess, that helps you a lot because it tells you you have plenty of this in your reaction system. You've got a ton of it. But this, you've only got 1.82 moles. So the problem is basically telling you you're going to run out of this first. And once you run out of this, no more product can be made. So this is our limiting reagent. It limits how much of the product can be made. So you'll find that in these problems, the first goal you will oftentimes face is to figure out what is your limiting reagent. And this problem is really nice because it tells you right off the bat, okay? So what that basically means is this 1.82 moles of HCl going to limit how much chlorine we can make. So we can work the stoichiometry problem. We know that for every 4 moles of HCl, we can make only 1 mole of chlorine gas. It's a 1 to 4 ratio. I've got 1.82 moles of HCl. That unit's cancel and convert to most chlorine gas that can possibly be produced by, via this reaction using the 1.82 moles. And when I do that, I find that I can produce 0 0.455 moles of chlorine gas. That's all I can make. I cannot make any more because I will run out of this, won't have any left, and if I don't have any of my HCl, my reaction is finished and over. So this is the answer to part A, how many moles of chlorine. They also ask us how many grams of chlorine can be produced. And all we need to do to figure this out is a moles to grams conversion. Pretty simple stuff at this point, hopefully. We take the number of moles of Cl2 that can be possibly produced, and we again do a unit conversion. We do gram units from moles. So all we need to know is how many grams are in one mole of Cl2. Of course, the answer here is 70.9. Now, I made that pretty simple, right? I just wrote a number there, 70.9. How did I get that? That's 2 multiplied by the atomic weight of chlorine on the periodic table. I had to multiply it by 2 again because here I'm dealing with the diatomic chlorine. So it's 70.9 grams per mole. When I do the math on that, I find... Thirty-two point two five nine five grams of Cl two can be produced. Now, if I'm worried about sick figs, these are exact whole number ratios. Um, I had three here. I could probably get a fourth if I'm more careful. But um, back to the beginning, I had three here. Okay, so I might want to truncate my answer to three. So in this particular case, since this is a five, I might choose to round that up to a three. 32.3 grams and be down with that, okay? So this is 369.